It's posted about two hours ago. Inside Infinite, January 2021. Now, as normal, we're going to do kind of a breakdown. We're going to be doing a talk, and we're just going to be kind of breaking down all this stuff. Um, I don't really, I haven't pre-read this at all. I have no idea what this says. I simply glanced through mostly the pictures, and it, it kind of, you know, it's not overall anything like super. It's not like they're spoiling campaign stuff in this or anything like that. I think, I think it's just going to be nice and, uh, yeah, I think it'll be just nice and a chill kind of like what's going on. So, uh, Happy New Year. Uh, last month's update you, know, you had is like, you know, they, this was the, the big un. This is the big. They showed off all the like the rockets and the snipers and the maps and everything and the armor that you were going to get. And, oh, gorgeous. So, uh, updates to be fairly high level and will lay the foundation. will continue to build over the months leading to launch. Rather than make this strictly one-way endeavor, following update, update will ask our community questions on social Using Ask343, look for opportunities to go deeper with the team and address uh, inquiries, all right? So I all about, I'm trying to set proper expectations, so want to be upfront. While we will always strive to inform and delight our community with these updates, this isn't the place for huge announcements, specific deep dives, or gameplay trailers. We know you're all eager for updated campaign gameplay, proper multiplayer reveal, public flighting, and other spe specific aspects. That will come in due time as large industry events take center stage and Halo marketing machine kicks into high gear. Fair enough. I feel like that should be obvious. Like, there's going to be... I, I think that they've always planned to do, like, a campaign reveal and they've planned, you know, they do the simple, like, they did for Halo 5 where they showed off, like, Battle of Ion and they show off other parts and they'll maybe do multiplayer. I'd love to see just, like, a match of multiplayer played. Um, yeah, so... Uh, this is Halo Six, Snowy. It's it's Halo Six. It takes it takes place after it's like four years after Halo Five or something. So this month we get sorry interviews of the Sandbox team, um, folks working to bring the Zeta Halo on life uh, to life, uh, and the audio team in March. Um, next month we'll talk to the folks bringing Zeta Halo to life. So it's Sandbox team today. Uh, February it's the the people who are just kind of I'm guessing campaign and just art um stuff then we got audio team in march and then uh april may but we'll and they still figure out april may they i mean it's pretty far out but it's good they're starting to think about that stuff so um typically deliver big moments so d big moments is june july august is what it says uh yeah so that's uh, that's kind of there so sandbox team uh thanks sketch this is probably you is this uni talking yeah so happy new year and thank you say excited time for the halo infinite uh what is your role at 343 entail so quinn is the join the studio he is the lead weapon designer uh tim is the uh senior designer and he specifically worked on vehicle design and then moved on the equipment david price he's the we a weapons designer um Close with multi, both multiplayer and campaign. Brian is lead vehicle designer, so he designs a lot of the vehicles, things like that. Um, ooh, BR. Um, but Elon is a, a sandbox designer, uh, and he's had he's been working on grapple shot and drop all, so that's what he's been doing. Um, and then Kevin is senior sandbox designer. And so he's kind of probably, yeah, interactive gameplay objects and other systems. So he's focused on dedicated to PC sandbox and systems. Okay. Well, there you go. And that's a BR. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, oh my God. Do you? Oh. I don't know if the stream does it any justice, but look. Oh, look at, look at, oh, look at that detail. Look at that detail. You're like here and you're like, dang, that's pretty good. And then you're like, oh my God. Look at all the little things. And oh. It's gorgeous. It's so beautiful. So, uh, this is Quinn. So, the sandbox refers to... So, if you guys don't know what sandbox is, it refers to the vehicles, equipment, weapons, and objects the player interact with. It's literally the toys in the sandbox. It's all the, all the weapons, all the, all the stuff that, that you use in a game, pretty much. Um, 
so and that includes verbs like jump, run, health values, stuff like that. So it, it just it involves kind of everything. It, it just encompasses in everything in the game almost. Um, this is the grapple shot. It looks like. Uh, both dials rotate when shot and rotates the other direction when you pull in. That's sick. <laughs> I don't know if you'll be able to see that in game, but that's sick. So it's the the Batman grapple hook kind of thing, you know? You see it go out and then you we see you hear the whirring and it comes back in. That's kind of fun. That's a fun time. So uh, it looks like it goes on. Yeah, it goes on the arm, the, your wrist. So sick so thanks for breaking it down like that since the sandbox team essentially builds the toys for different experiences such as campaign multiplayer how do we approach designing the sandbox for the entire game all right uh so our vision is what do, so in a way our our vision statement describes what our business is how do we go about our business in addition to that we have our halo combat doctrine which encompasses five core principles that surround everything we do as a team. So they create weapons, vehicles, player mechanics, and systems that are intuitive and reward player mastery. We respect Halo's legacy by partnering with our players with the same honesty and integrity we use to craft our gameplay. And I don't know what this is. I'm sure there's some lore on the Sandwolves thing. I don't know what this is. Um... So, first portion of the vision is uh, create weapons, you know, all that. Um, the Grok movement. And then, uh, so it rewards mastery and stuff like that. So, second piece is we operate as a team. We respect Halos by partnering with our players the same honesty. We acknowledge that we have a 20-year franchise. We recognize that players all around the world have different preferences, likes and dislikes. We commit to making sure we're mindful of past precedences and core experiences while making sure we're considering feedback from all players, not just campaign players or not just Halo CE purist. We strive to honor Halo's uh, 20, rich 20-year 20 history. Halo is special. We recognize that we ha all have jobs because of how special Halo is. We wouldn't be here if it wasn't for Halo, and it's a powerful impact in gaming. Also special our players. The relationship with our players is what, it, what as the Sandbox team, feel like. So all the people who are like, bro, uh, it's not Halo unless it's BR starts. Uh, you are important, too. As ridiculous of a statement as that is. <laughs> Uh, as our free-to-play multiplayer shifts as to a true service, the more critical than ever we are drive to continue feedback loops, uh, pri prioritizing the right work, and continually improving experience. Player feedback via community input and additional vectors like research studies serve as our North Star. So, again, research studies typically involve people who are gamers, but not necessarily Halo players. So it might be... And it's, it's a mixture of all. It's going to be people who are like... Typically, research studies involve, like, people who have never played a video game in their life, or people who don't play, or people who play regularly but not Halo, and then people who play Halo, or PlayStation people who play FPSs, and, uh, people who play only League of Legends, and, you know, RTSs, and stuff like that, uh, or MOBAs, and, and now they're playing Halo. They, you know, those are, they use all those kind of studies to, to, um for information about stuff so it um we won't act on every piece of evidence we receive from a committee as large and diverse as halo is but we are committed to operating with transparency and acknowledge issues and most importantly explain explain the why behind our decisions with infinite the investment we have made our tools allow us to be more responsive to balance issues and opportunities and, of course, we are committed to keeping the game fresh via meta shifts, new weapons, vehicles. That's a small little parenthesis, but, uh, sick. New meta shit or meta shifts, new weapons, and vehicles? Yay! That means there'll be content post-launch, which we know there was going to be, but even more of that is, like, they've already planned on, like, new weapons and, and stuff. That's kind of cool. So, Combat Doctrine. Open up sharing. So the Combat Doctor is establishes, uh, establishes core Halo gameplay philosophy. It outlines the principles 
as uh and i've i've heard about the halo combat doctrine for a while so but it's uh for most i'm guessing most people haven't it's uh playing in halo sandbox and specifically the moment to moment combat the primary purpose of these principles is to shape design discussions regarding foundational halo combat in both campaign and multiplayer experiences this guides us to make decisions so um we'll cover the most important of part of each so the dance the player goal is the players feel combat is in their hands to win or lose. Halo's combat is dynamic, ryth rhythm of engagement, reactive, and cerebral dance that feels like a sympathy symphony of combat choices, which is true. I mean, you know, you decide, hey, if you see a player going one way, you know how to approach him. Or if they see you, you know how you're going to approach certain fights. It's back and forth, and it's, it's making a bunch of decisions back to back, so... Principle speaks of feeling the nuanced combat between players that Halo provides is referred to as the dance. It's like when you're having a BR battle. I The amount of times that recently, like we went, uh, I played, what I, I, I guess we were doing, um, well, Halo 3 we did, I was doing SWAT, but also, what did we just, what did we just play? What did we just play? It was, was it MCC, something on MCC? I don't remember, but pretty much it is just, I think Halo 3 might have just been it. When you're, when you're BR battling someone and you're like, bro, I'm not backing down. I ain't backing down. It don't matter if I lose or win. You just commit to it. You know, it's, it's that kind of, it. that's the dance is you go back and forth. You exchange like three clips of ammo with each other. And then some dude comes up and backsmacks one of you. And you're like, all right, we were having a, a moment here. So um in victory they can outsmart or outplay their opponent because they use the correct toys and skillful actions for the given situation that is what i'm good at actually being able to outshoot people heck no this is principle is where the classic golden triangle is taken into consideration um which i believe the the basic one is the grenades uh, weapon or melee so tools of engagement the players feel that they are skilled Spartans, armored super soldiers, not regular foot soldiers. Each weapon or piece of equipment has a distinct feel and skill to use effectively. So, um, that's fluid movement, accurate gunplay while on the move, clear rolls for every weapon, vehicle, etc. When we began development on Halo Infinite, one of our major role goals was to remove redundancy in the sandbox. Weapons where the first area we wanted to have strong rolls that players gravitate because of the certain play style. So we wanted to f started from a blank canvas and called out all the high level rolls and play styles that we wanted players to experience. From here, we started to get into the details of which specific weapons were going to fill those rolls. Uh, this is also where damage types is much more feature rich system to come play. Classic example of a damage type would be plasma. Engaged Halo players understand that plasma is strong against Halo uh, against energy shields. For example, in order to really build out the uh, player choice and roles of the sandbox, we feel it's important to uh, feature multiple damage types in the game so that we have more attributes to play with when designing vehicles and weapons. As the game launches, we continue to develop new weapons. There will always be some crossover roles and play styles, but we'll be much more involved in keeping the sandbox fresh, which means the weapons on day one will assuredly be different after multiple updates and patches so weapons on day one will be different after patches because they're gonna tweak them to you know make them feel different so but it is it's like needler you know it's like why have the fuel rod has its own thing and the rocket has its own thing it wouldn't it doesn't make sense to have the halo 5 rocket launcher the the one that looks like the giant ma looking thing or whatever and the spanker they basically do the exact same thing they both log vehicles so i'm guessing they've picked one of those which we've seen the spanker rocket launcher you've picked one of those and that's what they're sticking with they don't need to have two rocket launchers in the game anymore they might they might still do it but again that's maybe later on so at least at the start things will feel a lot more individual so lone wolf player goal the player feels that they can stand alone and be effective without teammates or ai companions i mean this is I feel this is something that honestly a lot of the Halo games have lost a little bit um, uh, in the sense of that one-on-one. -on -one. I feel back in like Halo Halo 2, Halo 3, and even Halo Reach, when you got into a combat situation against players, 
on a one like a one on two situation, if you played it right, you feel that you might be able to actually outshoot both players. Like I I remember playing Halo Reach and there were times where it's like I got a sniper and a DMR. If I play and an evade, if I play this right, I might be able to somehow clutch out if I like use cover correctly and stuff like that. I'll be able to take out two players with no help from anyone else by myself. And that felt good. I don't feel you really get that in Halo, Halo 5. I feel like as soon as you run into two players, that's it. You're done. There's no there's no chance that you're going to quickly do two quick scopes with the sniper on, on them or, or even if you place it correctly. I mean, there still is that and you definitely can feel like you can run Lone Wolf. But I, I feel it's different now than what it was 10 years ago i i think it's just halo has definitely moved to a lot more of a cooperative like if you are you're fine alone if you're if you're constantly on one-on-one -on -one fights you can do fine but as soon as you start going against people who are actually acting as a team you're really going to struggle um so anyways to abide the lone wolf principle it, it uh means that we must provide players with necessary items and features to empower them to to be effective on their own like you get the rocket launcher you can definitely kill a bunch of people with the rocket launcher but we need to ensure players can feel powerful on their own. One way we achieve this is by looking at designing, tuning, and balancing starting loadouts for players in multiplayer. The basic traits, tools, and weapons must allow the player to be effective from the moment they spawn without the need to scavenge for good weapons. Hmm. And that's, once again, that's always been a thing. Almost all the Halos launched with a AR Magnum starts. Um, Halo Reach is one of the few that had like DMR starts, but even that had AR Magnum starts. Uh, I know Halo 3, I, th I think, had the BR starts as a game mode right off the bat too. Um, but a lot of those got added and got more important later on. Um, I think Halo 5 is a good example where it's like a lot of times, yeah, you feel fine with just using Magnum and Assault Rifle, but... If you see a sniper and stuff, you'll probably go pick it up, but you really don't feel like you absolutely need to switch out necessarily. Go a whole game without switching weapons and you'll be fine. Um, I hope that changes, to be honest, in Infinite. I hope I hope we get starting weapons that are fine, but they're, they're so middle ground that 90% of the time you're like, hey, I want to go pick up literally any other gun. Any other gun would be more fun and more enjoyable and just better overall than just sticking with whatever the starting loadout in infinite is going to be you know so norn fang so connected to actions players actions are quick frictionless and responsive um to the point that the controller and mouse key and mouse and keyboard fades away and the players is just engaged in combat everything should feel intuitive and we don't want the player to have to fight the game in order to have fun because of this principle the fact that halo infinite will be on pc that let us rebuild the control scheme system to allow players to fully rebind and remap their controls regardless of platform how players control chief on their spartan is or their spartan is crucial and re-recognized players must feel connected to the game uh when control customization is fully featured the most connected so but that's sick so we have fully rebind and fully remappable controls on all platforms so bro i can't wait until i make my uh my shoot button x and my my grenade button b and uh, i'll make my aim button y aim up button y but then the aim left button will be the select button and then aim aim right will be down on the d-pad just why not you know so i'm into it survivability players have an understanding of their vulnerability and threat identification the principle conveys a couple of important values first the important systems in the game modes provide the player the ability to assess pertinent information and regarding the health state of themselves and opponents so they can make the best combat decision possible second the importance of energy shields as a corn cornerstone mechanic to halo gameplay the importance of energy shields as part of the overall health mechanic can't be understated when creating a new sandbox items that interplay with damage or affect players vitality we take into account all the knobs at our disposal of energy shield tuning such as max shield value shield stun time 
shield recharge time, and more. Players need to feel durable and strong when they have shields up. If we create a sandbox toys that violates that feeling, then we run into problems as we conflict with that foundational gameplay element. Uh, we move away from the experiment and try something else. So, there it is. Ooh. That's just uh, uh, obscene when you think about it, but... As you can imagine, there's a lot to unpack here, but to sum it up, the sandbox team naturally uses these for every new vehicle, item, ability, and weapon we create. Same holds true to set on the design player traits like health and shields, values, jump tuning, movement speeds. Something I would like to call out is the principles can and likely will evolve over time in, in Infinite's launch, which is true. Be becoming a living, breathing game with meta shifts and co the community desires. Uh, we hold ourselves to this doctrine, but also do our best to not paint ourselves in a corner. So it's good. Uh, one topic in the combat doctrine, which would uh could be fun to dive into is the role of equipment in combat we saw a glimpse of the grapple shot and the drop ball in our campaign demo i've seen fans ask about equipment roles in the sandbox so equipment is meant to be a force multiplier by design player can flip combat it can count on its head if they possess an equipment item much like you saw master chief deploy a drop wall right when the brute tossed the spike grenade in the campaign reveal what was a difficult situation swung Chiefs in Chiefs' favor due to the quick thinking and instincts. There's something that we feel excitement, exciting back women. They provide an avenue of actions that exist in a free form space, unlike the well defined box and vehicle or weapon. Above is just one example from campaign. In multiplayer, equipment is earned via combat and or scavenging the play space, which brings a level of fairness and competition to the experience. At a high level, the equipment items themselves will perform similarly across campaign and multiplayer experiences. So I'm assuming, like, grapple shot is not... You grapple a wall, and you're going to go towards the wall. In campaign, you're going to do the same in multiplayer. It's not like you grapple the wall, and now you're just tethered to the wall, and now you can just use it as a tether so you can swing on a rope or something. <laughs> um, for example, the drop wall wall's role is, is def defensive energy will... Shield will be the same across experiences. However, we are tailoring each equipment, all sandbox features for that matter, to experience they are being used. So expect to see minor differences between multiplayer campaign when it comes to acquiring equipment, the frequency they can be used. So I'm assuming in multiplayer, it's going to be Halo 3 style. It's going to be like you have to pick it up and you get you get like one or two uses of it or something like that. Um, is what I imagine is like you get a grapple hook and you only get to use it once or maybe you get to use it three times or something and then you have to go find it again so as we prototype equipment we gravitate towards those that complemented and enhanced the core combat loop pushing the boundaries just far enough to feel empowering without being disruptive we look for equipment that could be paired with maps modes weapons and vehicles in new effective ways another key aspect was equipment with a low skill floor and a high skill ceiling in other words equipment is easy to understand for beginning players but the elements of mastery and allow high skill and do amazing stuff grapple hook grapple hook bro the amount of grapple hook no scope crazy trick jumps we're gonna see oh my god i already know i'm gonna do crazy stuff of like entering combat and then needing to get away so you grapple the ceiling and you basically just hang yourself on the ceiling for a few seconds and then drop down on top of the player as he comes out or whatever it is i'm so ready um i heard so what was the tweet oh uh hold on let me go look oops grapple shot to the ward from the grapple shot to the warthog the sandbox team okay so i thought that said something else to be 100 percent honest um but it did make me think like if you grapple a shot like a moving vehicle like a warthog can you just like skate behind it you just hook yourself you have your teammate drive away with the the warthog and then you hook onto it and then you just like skate behind it or you can use it as a moment. He can whip you. If, it, if anything, it's just like it speeds you up because you have to catch up to the Warthog. So it, it just like adds your momentum. He drives. You catch onto it. It flings you so fast that you can just like launch yourself across the map with it. Interesting things to think about. So equally important is how equipment feels on the opponent's end. Not only that it's balanced, but the engaging counterplay to 
or clear telegraphing that gives players on both sides an opportunity to display skill mastery. Same thing. It's like, oh, this guy's grapple hooking all over the place. That's fine. I can just shoot him while he's in the air. Or a drop wall, a giant shield that goes over the player. That's fine. I'll just toss a nade and bank it off the wall and kill him. Right? So... Uh, in recent tales, had more innate abilities. Equipment in Infinite creates fewer overall instances of change within the core combat loop. However, we can make these instances more impactful and fun. We have more room to push the boundaries and line players. So, I'm guessing that, you know, that talks about, like, ground pound, shoulder charge, and thruster pack and stuff like that. So, uh, I don't know if those will still be in the game, but I... Maybe it'll be turned into equipment. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, allowing new ways for players to express their skill and game knowledge across playtiles. Um, another big part is the connection to the legacy element of Halo 3, something that players enjoyed and can understand, and upgrading it into a modern Halo experience. So they're already referencing that they're uh, very connected to Halo 3, so I'm assuming it is. It's a limited amount um, that, so... I'm guessing this is the drop wall, yeah. So this is the drop wall. It basically... It's, it's, it's basically the deployable cover, but it looks just way bigger than the, the deployable cover, so. Cool, so. But hey, Ragemore Nerd, thank you so much for the 52 month sub. That's a lot of subs. Thank you so much. You were beautiful. You were sexy. You know I love you. Welcome back to the Insane Sound, my friend. Uh, vehicle is another core element of the Halo sandbox. Uh, we got to see Master Chief jumping in a warthog and hit some sweet drifts and jumps. <laughs> yeah, dude, that was... Ooh, man. <laughs> Hype. I mean, it was. I was I was excited. The, the sound of the warthog, man. Ooh. So good. So, vehicles are a very important part of Halo. You always remember jumping to Warthog for the first time playing co-op Halo CE with a friend. Of course, man. That that silent cartographer journey you went on, it's good. Um, sweet drifts and sick jumps, that's the Warthog. Functionally, I think there's a few things vehicles do uniquely to the sandbox. Lock new traversal types. Even land vehicles allow players to navigate the play space differently than while on foot. Going over an area covered in rocky crags and fallen trees, the Warhog with its high ride height and will eat it up. Going over a flat marsh covered with pockets of water, the anti-grab of the ghost will let you smoothly boost through it. Stuck in a canyon. Bro, are they actually going to have, like, water physics? Because that would be sick. Like, uh, it would be cool if you think, like, uh, Valhalla and Halo 3, that little river... If you actually walked in the river, it would slow you down if you went across against the current and sped you up if you walked with it. I'm not opposed. That would be cool that, yeah, the ghost could just fly over. But if you're in a warthog, you actually have to, like, fight the current. That would kind of be cool. But, uh... Need to unlock the environment. Ours and love designs to make, uh, make much more complex terrain. Early on, I made the promise to, to these teams that if they made awesome-looking environments, we make the vehicles to able to traverse them. We have dev builds of all of the other older Halos going back to CE, and the terrain in order of magnitudes, and this terrain is order of magnitude more difficult. While this caused a significant retuning of core vehicles that have been in every Halo, when you see the gorgeous environments of ha ha Infinite, I think it's worth it. So basically, they've retuned a lot of the vehicles. All the vehicles that you know and how they work, they've been changed up quite a lot. Which, it depends how. That's not necessarily a bad thing, because like he said, maybe it, I think it's worth it. Is we'll, we'll see when the game actually comes out, obviously. I mean, we don't know. But uh, yeah, I'm guessing, being open world, the Warthog is probably going to travel a little faster than it ever has, and things like that. You know, maybe turn a little easier. Who knows? So... Uh, vehicles organically form player parties. It, it's true, right? You have a three-seater and stuff like that. I mean, I still do it in, in Warzone right now in Halo 5. Someone just pulls up with a needle hog or a wraith. I'm going to hop into that turret. Thanks. Spent the whole match playing together. Even if you got destroyed, you spawn in. Go find another. <laughs> exactly. I remember doing that lots. It's true. Uh, Long-term tempo pieces of encounters. An example, a sniper rifle due to the ammo capacity is a finite cap. 
to the impact it can have on an encounter slash the map. Vehicles have infinite ammo, meaning they exist as a challenge boon in an encounter until they are either destroyed or hijacked. Uh, while vehicles having the different this different temper, we on the scene are to have more layers to their encounter compositions. This long-term tempo mean, does mean if the sandbox isn't too correctly, vehicles can become oppressive quickly. I mean, we've seen it all the time with Banshee bombs, right? So just uh, nerf Banshee bombs to the ground. Uh, what this means to me is that if the Golden tri Triangle doesn't provo provide counters to vehicles, melee grenades, weapon, uh, they will dominate. It's true. So... You need to have something to, you know, shut vehicles down, blow them up, lock onto them, all that. So, Sandbox has worked hard to healthy interplay between all parts and think we're in a good spot right now. But we're on course for continuing to monitor feedback during playtests and eventually public flighting. hey -o. Public flighting. What's a bold face lie, Finch? I'm confused. Public flighting. One more time. All right. Uh, this is where. Oh my God. We got we got a little bit to go through. We got some fun stuff to look at though. Me hopping warthogs. Oh, I see. I've been doing it. You just gotta pull up on me. Half the time I don't even see you. You gotta you gotta give me the hawk, mate. You don't hawk me, I don't see ya. Oh, I don't look both ways before crossing the word road in Halo. So, all right, Quinn again said above. Oh, uh, so another uh, gameplay element mentioned is the damage types. I've always loved Halo V weapons with the unique traits, so it's great to see. How's the sandbox team embracing damage types in Halo Infinite? Halo has always had damage types to some degree from the very beginning. Plasmas, right? Plasmas versus... Uh, UNSC, like, fragmentation weapons and stuff like that. So, uh, Damage Tribes was one of the feature sets that weapons team decided to really go after. Ooh. We felt that in order to achieve stronger weapon identity than previous has, having another category of attributes that we can fold in our designs creates a stronger choice. For example, if we had the Damage Type system in Halo 4 when the Light Rifle was created, instead of having the DMR and Light Rifle be similar, minus the different visuals and damage tuning, we would have weapon traits unique to the Light Rifle because it shoots Hard Light. Oh, Hard Light is the Damage Type, okay. Rather, all Hard Light weapons would have a unique attribute to them that aren't shared with your typical UNSC weaponry, or what we can call Kinetic Damage Types. So, UNSC weapons is Kinetic... Hard light is light rifle. Covenant weapons are plasma. So far, so good. Players now have stronger choices presented to them. Instead of using the weapon that you li you like because of how it shoots or handles in infinite, you might want to grab a certain weapon because of how it affects other players, the environment, vehicles, and its essence. Cool. So it's more about weapons causing a specific impact or damage types causing impact in the gameplay rather than, yeah, I'm going to choose the DMR over the BR. Or I'm going to choose um, the plasma pistol over, or I'm going to use the bolt shot over the suppressor. And, you know, a lot of them doing kind of similar things or whatnot. So that way the player can make better combat decision based on the scenario. Uh, to further clarity, the purpose of legacy damage types, kinetic and plasma, the team is also pursuing new surprises for players that we're eager to talk about in months ahead. Leading the leading the charge in all weapon designs for infinite. Ooh. We talking some new kind of weapon? If we got hard light and we got kinetic and plasma, and he's like, we're pursuing new surprises. Ooh. New, like, a new entire weapon thing that we know. Maybe maybe it's just, like, brute. Brute, like, spike-based weapons. I don't I don't know. I could see that. Would the Kneeler be considered a spike-based weapon? Is it is Kneeler considered plasma? What is Kneeler considered? I don't know what the Kneeler is considered. Uh, I, I don't know if it's considered a plasma, right? Yeah. So, yeah, maybe, maybe it's a brute. Brute-type damage type or something like that that have to do with, like, the spikers and spike grenades and 
need like who knows who knows we want to keep the rules uh for damage types simple understandable and sustainable halo has already had a loose rule set with plasma weapons we want to further define this rule set so players can have expectations of damage type keeping the rules simple allows us to still have weapons with unique behaviors and roles so if you want to quickly strip personal shields they can use plasma but this doesn't dictate a weapon's play style, class, or power level. It could have a shotgun style that is one of those damage types. This approach allows, you know, beam rifle versus... Is there a plasma shotgun? There's not really a plasma shotgun, is there? Beam rifle versus the storm rifle, I guess? So, we want what we should... <sighs> Feel diverse even if they share the same damage type. Fair enough. Plas you know, again, plasma pistol versus plasma rifle, I guess. So changing gears now, after the campaign demo, we saw plenty of questions emerge about the weapons. In addition to the CQS-48 Bulldog shotgun, which appeared at the end of the demo, garnered some attention because of the unique characteristics. Would you or someone on the team be able to speak to the Bulldog's role in Halo Infinite Sandbox? So this is the Needler, once again. Oh, the detail. Oh, look at that. You can see the little hexagons on the the plasma plating. Oh, oh, my God. Oh, my God. The pink, the little pink coming out of, of the glow. Oh, it's amazing. This is the bulldog. Look at that. Look at that handle. And, oh, look at look, It's a 12 gauge. And, oh, oh, it's so gorgeous. It's so beautiful. It's so gorgeous. Okay. Bulldog is an exciting new shotgun that is fast firing and fast loading. We felt the shotgun playstyle has been underrepresented in pro <sighs> We found that a lot of players that want to be that in your face CQC frontliner, but have never had the more re readily available, less powerful, but less effective shotgun that allowed them to play the role frequently, but have never had a more readily available, less powerful, but still effective shotgun. Player's story genesis of how the bull dime came to be. So, this is the shotgun for me. All I do is complain about shotguns and how stupid aiming a shotgun all of a sudden makes the pellets in Halo 5 uh, more accurate. Or aiming your sword, licking down the sight of your sword makes you get a further lunge. It's stupid. I hate shotguns. But, uh, I'm a fan. If this is like a more shotgun -y gun instead of a shotgun that can hit you from 80 feet away it's like a hey you come around the corner when i'm sitting there you're, you're gonna get blasted i'm okay with that so uh we want to have a shotgun that is not as not a power weapon the bulldog is a versatile weapon that provides a player the role of a shotgun and up close personal play style more frequently in multiplayer than previous tiles halo tiles as it's lower on the lethality scale of weapons and thus more prevalent we want to shotgun to embrace rapid fire, dish out multiple shots. So you're not, it's at, my assumption is you're not going to be able to kill someone in one shot unless maybe you shove it down their mouth. Uh, but it'll be a, like two, three shot kill. Maybe, I don't even know. Four sounds a little excessive, but it's fast. It, de it depends on how fast it fires. If it shoots like Call of Duty, a the, what, the A12 or the AA12, uh, like the auto shotty, and it shoots that fast, Four shots happen really quick. So if it's like that style, oof, uh, th those melt. But uh, if it's like, I don't know, if it if it's just a fast firing shotgun, might be cool. Uh, maybe this is the new Mauler. The, it, this is the new shotgun meta. Instead of using the regular shotgun that hits so far away as you have to get up close and personal, but it's one shot, one melee. I don't know. Maybe that won't kill though. So, uh, but it's it's gorgeous. It's a gorgeous gun. Um. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Shadley's kind of Mauler esque. So, but it's fast firing. I, sh I assume it'll shoot like faster than the Maul. So, because of the live nature of Halo Infinite, we should see the Bulldog as well as other weapons, equipment, vehicles receiving balance updates from flighting and after launch. I know the team has been fine tuning, tuning weapons for a while now. Does that. How's the overall feedback and impl implementation process look like? Yeah, 100%. Like I said earlier, everything in the sandbox is more malleable grows over time um 
Sandbox sends out monthly patch notes to the studio and all the meta changes and new features that come online in the month prior. The studio right now is our player base, and we're treating the internal 343 team the same way as we treat the community, with honesty, respect, integrity. Additionally, we are leveraging user research, daily campaign, and multiplayer play desks, the 343 Pro team, and additional external play desks in conjunction with designer feedback to inform changes and adjustments. That's a mouthful, but, uh... Can I be part of this user research? Like, can I, where do I sign up to be part of user research? Can I do that? I'll do, I'll, I'll sign up. Let me do it. I'll do it. I want to, I, I want to give feedback. I love it. That's, that'll be my, I'll just be like, I love it. And that's my answer to everything. Uh, it wouldn't be, but you know, this will not change once the game goes live. Just the scale of data will be huge, which we're super excited for. Of course. I mean, you're getting instead of a hundred people, you'll get a few million people. Correct, like most elements, uh, equipment tuning is an ongoing process and stays reactive to the findings and community feedback. Because again, a lot of metas have found that, you know, 100 people don't figure out. Just If you had 100 people play Halo for the lifetime, I don't think we would have found all the uh, speedrun strats we've found in the games. You know, it just wouldn't have happened with 100 people. So, uh, it's important to address that feedback at both a competitive pro level and more social players. Equipment must... Be effective and empowering across all skill levels while also being completely viable. In terms of the weapons, we look at data feedback from every source we can find. Uh, we then look at the weapon's intended role and function. And then uh, we test changes internally and then push them live if we like them. Hmm. Get it as frequently as possible. The meta in multiplayer games is constantly evolving. Yeah, yeah. Fine-tuning equipment while, uh, whether it's playtests across the studio or closed flighting, we routinely take that information in and determine areas we can improve or balance for. We've heard about this, though, right? This is the second time they most mentioned closed flighting. Because they mentioned it in one of the blog, like, the two blog posts before that they had been working with some players already. How do I sign up? Where do I sign up? Sign me up. Uh, equipment can be used quite differently across various skill levels, so it's important for us to make sure our changes are re retain the fun and competitive fairness. Yeah. The first part, um, once we hit day one, we as we will be able to respond quickly, so... A lot of feedback comes in very raw and honest. When getting the feedback, it's nice to be present to dig into the root and ca the cause of the frustration. The mongoose sucks because it's too slow. Can be a lot of things. Is the acceleration too slow? Does it lose too much momentum when turning? Is the top speed? You know, it, 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 you have to be right. Smart feedback, basically, is you just need... Um, what's... Oh, God. What's the... What is it? Give smart. What, what's the, the whole thing stand for? Uh, specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and timely. That's smart. Is Basically, is you got to be specific. You got to be detailed. If the mongoose is slow, why is it slow? Tell us, like, is it the top speed's too slow? It takes too long to get to the top speed? What do you not like? Does it just feel it doesn't get across the map quick enough? Um, it's measurable. Uh, it's just, you know, how is it compared to other vehicles? Can this be fixed? So is it easy to fix such? Uh, yeah, up the speed of it. Is it relevant? Were they looking for the... They're like, hey, uh, we want to know how fast the DMR... Uh, how fast the, the foreshot on the DMR feels, or the BR feels. And people are like, Mongoose is slow. And it's like... we. We didn't ask that question. We, that's not useful. And then time bases, you know, get, again, give it in a timely fashion. If they ask, hey, w how's the speed of the mongoose? And then you wait three weeks, and then they're asking other questions. And they're like, oh, yeah, the mongoose is fine. And it's like, we didn't. Wh what do you mean? What, do you, what are you talking about? So, fair enough. All right, so... 
sandbox shelf. I also make sure to ping in the studio who have lots of interested opinions in Halo vehicles to get their perspective. After all that, we work with our user research and community teams, especially, eventually, public flighting, once that gets going. Public flighting! Hashtag public flighting. Uh, speaking of tuning, the Sandbox team also works uh, to tune controls and inputs for the game, which now includes PC and mouse and keyboard controls. Since this is the first time we're also building simultaneously, how does the team make sure weapons vehicles all feel great? Uh, we have a team dedicated to making PC. We know that. There's an Xbox team and a PC team. So we know there's two teams. Uh, we work internally with the pro team as well as partners in user research to ensure we have a broad set of data. So... Major goal for Infinite on PC is to hit the top tier PC experience. Having MCC on PC is also a great help. Uh, we have staffed up the team. We're devoted to the PC livelihood. So, yeah. So, it pretty much is... They have a set of people. We're playing on PC every day. And I'm sure they're playing on Xbox every day, too. So... Uh, what is the Sandbox team currently focused on? Can you speak briefly of the team's remaining work and priorities over the next... This is an important part, to me at least. So, again, this is very high level. Uh, as we could tell, there's not a lot of crazy information. Not crazy. We're not getting crazy updates like they said. It's simply like, hey, here's kind of what the team's working on. And so you guys are aware, like, hey, this is what this is where the game's at. So, Sandbox is super busy from everyone fixing budge, bugs uh, on our launch content to some exciting efforts kicking off future updates like new vehicles, equipment, new equipment too, sick, but we're pretty much playtesting a ton and looking for ways to polish and improve everything. So they're already on the polish and improve phase as the major thing. So awesome. That's good. That's they're, That's really good that they're on that. Instead of like, oh man, we still have so much to do tuning and making weapons. And it's like, oh god, you have less than a year. What the heck are you doing? So this is good. All our launch content is in-game. All of our launch content is in-game and being played daily. Sick. That's awesome. So that means all of the weapons. And that's not all the content. Just the sandboxes team uh, content, which is a lot of stuff. Weapons and vehicles and all that is in game and being played daily so that's really cool so getting to get something from 90 percent to full 100 percent ship quality so they're quote unquote at 90 percent now again don't take these literally but uh i'm sure lots of bugs and stuff like that and tuning needs to happen uh, close to launch and public flighting public flighting Evaluate visuals of certain sandbox items. Okay, cool. So they, you know, these might adjust. This is the Hydra. The Hydra. Sick. Dude, the, oh, it's so gorgeous. God, they're so beautiful. Is this going to be, like, they keep using the same. Is this just, like, the standard? They're just taking the a photo and then overlaying? Or is this, like the weapon customization screen in infinite because this is in engine by the way work in progress in engine render like uh, sick so all right i have two more questions before i let you get back to it don't worry these are just for fun what's your favorite weapon vehicle or equipment in halo infinite and if we haven't shown you yet can you give us hints as to what it may be it's okay let's Ooh, this is uh, this is the, the the theory time. One of my favorite sandboxes is a vehicle that we haven't shown yet, but I'm sure I won't be alone with the favoritism once we do reveal it to the community. This vehicle isn't totally brand new, but it's received a fresh coat of paint. I mean. I don't know all the vehicles in Halo Wars, so maybe it's something from, like, Halo Wars. But, yeah, Falcon, maybe Chopper? I mean, it, we are dealing with Brutes, so I assumed we would get some kind of Chopper or something, right? So I'm thinking, like, yeah, either Falcon or Wasp or Chopper? That's kind of... Those are my three go-to. I mean, I guess they could also have, like, the Revenant or the Spectre. I guess we could also see. I could be cool with the Spectre. But I feel like, since they haven't shown it, 
Wait, did they show... Was there a chopper in the demo gameplay at all or anything like that? Did we see it at all? Because if, if we did see... I don't know if we've seen the chopper yet or anything. I, I assume not. I don't remember seeing one. So if there hasn't been one shown yet, then yeah, I'm going to assume chopper, right? If it's not entirely brand new and we know brutes and stuff are a big part, it's got to be something like that, right? I could definitely see like Falcon Wasp though. I think Spectre would be fun. I liked the Spectre and Revenant. So, um, but I feel, again, I'm just going off theory here, obviously, like, when they're talking about the sandbox that they want to make everything feel u unique, the Revenant is really just a wraith, but it moves a little faster, you know? So I could see where it, it might be something more along the lines. Like, I'm I'm going Chopper. I think Chopper is the most likely, okay? So um, we have some really exciting equipment we haven't shown yet, but yet the grapple shot is probably my favorite of the bunch. Not only does it feel fun, but additionally, functionality hasn't been revealed. There's additional functionality that hasn't been revealed yet that adds some more offense-focused gameplay that I'm super excited to show off. What does that mean? So there's other equipment first off. He's like, oh, by the way, there's extra equipment. But my, but the grapple shot's my... Man, give us some hints. Don't do that. Give me some hints. But it's grapple shot, but it has some additional functionality we haven't seen. What does that mean? What could that mean? I mean, I like I'm trying to think of how you use a grapple hook. You use a grapple hook and it pulls you. And we saw them attached to an enemy in the demo. You attach to the brood and then like stuck them with the nade. That was a sick maneuver, by the way. So you we know you can attach to enemies. And he grappled the the fusion coil, right? The noob cube. He grabbed the he like grappled the the noob cube and and that's how he picked it up and threw it right. So we know you can do to objects. I maybe like, can you set like a swing feature on it? Is what I can think. Is basically make it like an actual grapple hook instead of a grapple shot that you like. Hook it and then it, its pathfinder pulls you towards it. Is that you can kind of pathfinder it that if you know how to do it you can swing with the pathfinder grapple hook right that's kind of what i'm relating it to is is pathfinder is my most likely is is the one that i'm using as reference because i played a lot of pathfinder um i'm trying to think how i use that and what other functionality that i could possibly have and i could think of like a swing maneuver kind of thing is like maybe you can set it maybe there's an option to almost like set it so it doesn't pull you or maybe there's a button you push or there's a way to do it that if you grapple hook you just hit the button again and it zips you towards it so you get sucked up by the grapple um because that's what we saw in the campaign is he grappled the wall and it just pulled him towards it but i wonder if you can set it where you can just attach yourself and like i was saying i was making the joke about tethering yourself is like oh you know they're not gonna allow you to tether yourself if, if the grapple hook pulls you in campaign you can't tether. but maybe it is that you can like tether yourself to a ceiling and then you could just kind of like swing around with it that would be kind of fun you can cross giant gaps by just like attaching the ceiling and and launching yourself that might be kind of cool so that's kind of my assumption but the ravager is one of my new favorite weapons it's sh changed a little too since it debuted in the campaign reveal which one was the ravager i don't remember what the which one the ravager was i have some vague like it looked almost like a weird doom-esque weapon if i remember but i don't remember what it did what did what was the ravager have it push allow more area denial while still delivering a unique launcher style. Okay, well, there you go. It was a burst fire weapon. It was a burst fire weapon that's like a launcher. Oh, that's the... um. No, the pistol revolver was the mangler, Zach. That was that was the mangler. I remember seeing that. Um, That looked like almost like the mauler was the, like the three thing. It's it's That's why I remember the name is I keep messing it up with mauler. It's the Mangler is that, um, that gun. Um, the Ravager, I believe, was like, it looked like a mouth almost. It had like a weird flat top, but then like almost a, it had almost a brute spike at the end of it, like the spikers do. Uh, it had like a spike at the bottom of it. And if, if your if burst is correct, it was like this weird, like it shot red plasma and it looked like almost like a weird burst fire grenade launcher. Um, 
kind of like the concussion rifle, but rapid fire is if I remember. I think that's it. So cool. Grapple shot is definitely a favorite of mine, but I'm equally excited about an equipment that hasn't shown yet. It's a highly physics based and has tons of interactions across the sandbox and leave you laughing or yelling. Did you see that? Proper timing is everything with this equipment. If you position yourself correctly, you could very well send your enemies flying. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> highly, bro. When they use the words highly physics based, I get very giddy. Because this can lead to some really fun speedrun tech. Like, it's like grenades. Grenades are kind of physics based. And you throw a grenade under, under like a tree branch. And then you launch yourself. You launch the tree branch, which launches yourself. I guess crate. I'm like combining uh, Breath of the Wild at the same time. Where I'm thinking, when they, th when they say physics based, I'm thinking the whole, you freeze an object. And then you hit it a whole bunch. And then you send yourself... Climb on and send yourself flying in Breath of the Wild. Bro, that would be cool. Whoa, wait. What if it is that? What if it's literally that? You could like, what if there's like a stasis thing where you could stasis objects and then you could shoot them to like add velocity to them and then fucking launch them around places. That would be sick. If there's like a stasis bubble... I'm thinking partly Breath of the Wild uh, when it comes to objects, but I'm also thinking, like, if you've ever played the game Time Shift, it's a great game. It had incredible multiplayer. It had really cool multiplayer mechanics. One of my favorite multiplayer games because it had, again, I, I talk about it all the time because it, it had, I think, one of the most unique multiplayers where it was a regular FPS. It felt like any other kind of FPS of that way. Um... But you had additional, you had, because the game was all about time manipulation, you had time bubbles that you could create. You would basically point somewhere and you would shoot like a, almost like a, a bubble and it would land and create a field that would do stuff. So you could like slow people down. So you could hit people with a slow field. And then while they're going through it, they go really slow. And so it's like they could still maneuver, but it's just really slow. And then you could just shoot hundreds of bullets into this slow field and it would you would just see them like slowly hit the player and there was nothing they could really do um that one i mean the bullets traveled so fast that it didn't really slow down but it was really cool for like killing players is that if you actually got someone in the bubble and you could do stuff with that where you could make like grenade explosions last longer because you put a slow field in them so they blew up and the effect of them lasted longer um or they had the stop one the, they, they just had a full pause one where you threw it down and everything in it, the time was just paused. So you you could create your own shotgun, basically. Is like, you would see a guy coming around, like you ran around a corner, you put a stop bubble behind you, and then you just lay an entire clip of ammo into the bubble and you see all the bullets just freeze. And then the person comes around the corner, the bubble disappears, and all the bullets just collide into the person in the exact same moment. Super cool. So it was a super cool effect. Um... Uh, and you could do you could manipulate things like that where you could like throw it on they had lifts and stuff fans you could basically throw the stop field on the bottom of the fan and it would just stop the fan so if someone went if someone tried to run away by going up a lift you could just shoot the lift with your stop and they would just drop down and fall to their death or they would just you could just fall down or shoot them same thing as they had a reverse time one where you would shoot it and instead of lifting people up it would suck people down really fast <laughs> so you could do things like if someone was like camping on top of a lift uh, and they like they were close enough that the lift was kind of affecting them. If you hit the reverse time on it, it would literally suck them off the platform and bring them down to you. Super cool multiplayer with super cool mechanics. So uh, anyways, long story short, we're talking like a time time manipulation shit, a stasis bubble. Is that like I'm I'm in. I'm just saying if we get like stasis bubble, I'm totally in. I mean it has to be very balanced. That that stuff is hard to balance, but it'd be really cool if you could like stasis objects and then launch them across the map. That feels unhalo like ish, but at the same time, open world halo, who the heck knows, man. I'm in. That would be sick. Favorite vehicle has to be the Warthog. There's no other choice. It's the GOAT. So 
Uh, we are working on a new vehicle that's looking pretty hot. This new vehicle will sit nicely between the Warthog and Scorpion in terms of power level. So it ignites some new discussions in what vehicle to take to a mission. We got our initial concept, which really lit a fire under the team and get it into flighting. So stay s tuned. Warthog between... Oh, a thing between Warthog and Scorpion. That means better than a Gosshog? I don't know. I, do people know about any Halo Wars vehicle that might fit something like that? That's like not as good as a, a tank, but better than a car? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know Halo Wars well enough to potentially really know even what to say on that one. I'm trying to think of a some armored... Like armored truck of some sort i don't even know i don't know the locust i have no idea what that is sure the locust let's go with that uh i think i know you two which two you're keeping secret and those are some excellent choices not now to the last Whose idea was it to allow players to pick up Thorg Fusion Coils? It's one of my favorite editions because it's so... I'm so excited about this edition. You heard me during the... If you watch the video, you heard me during it. I am so excited about this feature. Jo like, I remember Uni, uh, John uh, Udashek, who's the one talking. When they released the campaign demo, they were talk he talked about the, the Fusion Coil and called it a noob cube, which was the greatest name of all time for it. So you're just tossing noob cubes at people. I freaking love it. So Fusion Coil Tossing is a brainchild of one of our senior sandbox designers, Kevin Stoker. His primary design, design owner of all of our interactive sandbox objects and grab lifts, man cannons, etc. There are a few more surprises with Fusion Coils too. Remember, we want to better integrate the damage type system. Fusion Coils will be no exception. Also, wait until we show what we've done with another's classic sandbox item that has been in Halo since the beginning, but hasn't gotten much love until now. Ooh. Okay. Let's, uh... Speculation time. So, from that, I mean, I'm guessing there'll be different types of fusion coils. Ones that fit other damage types, right? So, there'll be, like, the normal explosive one, but maybe they'll have, like, a plasma fusion coil. That would be cool. Um... I don't even know what a hard light fusion coil would look like, but. Another classic that has been in Halo since the beginning. Halo 1 sandbox that hasn't gotten a lot of love. I feel grenades do change pretty constantly, so I don't think it'd be something like grenades. Um... Hmm. Sandbox item. All I think about is like weapon crates or shields, like the, the deployable cover shields. Uh, mini scarab, lol. Any ideas? I got no ideas, Grey Wolf. Flamethrower? Ooh, that's a good... I didn't even think about that, but you're right. Flamethrower was in Halo CE. And they, like, hold on, hold on, hold on. Maybe there was a hint here, right there, right there. Flamethrower. Ooh, I mean, this is a Halo 3, this is a, the Halo graphic novel. Um, so this is an image, but that's a good point. I didn't think that is a great, huh? turret maybe too could be turrets could be flamethrowers that's not bad i like that i like that okay 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 so um so yeah this feature really just came up when i was messing around with one of our test levels i just thought it'd be cool to be able to throw them so i put it in and people seem to like it since they were received well in playtest, we gave it the more attention while adding the doomed state so they can propel themselves around when damaged. So that's kind of like when a fusion coil blows up, it launches other fusion coils and then they launch and then they blow up 
after they hit the ground or something. I don't really know what that means, but okay. Uh, anyways, uh, well, I think that's all the questions I have. Thanks for joining us. So he's like, uh, thank you to Sketch and all that. Secondly, I'd like to close Brain Brains back to the second part of Vision Statement. Is we'll do everything in our power to nurture the power player and sandbox relationship by being honest in all our communication. There will be times that we have to make trade-offs for the greater good and can't address every request for every specific subgroup of players. But we'll always close the loop and share our reasoning. Even when it comes to the outcome, even when it's an outcome some may disagree with. And it doesn't matter. Any decision, someone's going to disagree with them. Let's be real. So just the like, hey, putting it the flamethrower in a game, some people are going to hate it. It's like, why? Like the flamethrower is great. Who hates flamethrowers? But someone will. So exhibit integrity when it comes in all actions. Uh, we will finish what we're set to do. And if... If and when we make mistakes, we will always be truthful with players and rectify the mistake de uh, decisively, no matter what. We've always felt this way, but with Halo Infinite being built as a game that will grow and evolve over time, we're partnering with our community to help inform our priorities and opportunities to make more is more critical than ever. This year is going to be exciting for all of us, and the launch is only the beginning. Can't wait to share. So, yay! All right, and then Tales from the tw Trenches. Each month, we'll venture into three four three trenches to hear from members of the team about what excites them, what we're working on, and get in some insights behind the scenes happening on Halo Infinite's development and these stories. So, uh, these ones. Oh, this one doesn't have a name, but we got one from uh, the live producer, the lighting artist, and the game foundation architect. And then we got parting words, which we'll get to. That sounds fun. Parting words from Joseph staten the lord and savior himself so uh this year i'm excited about getting our flighting program together so people can play some halo we're starting spinning up more internal flighting getting our builds to where we want them and work on delivery sometimes we run into some difficult situations along the way but the teams pull together and get these flights off the ground is inspiring to me and i feel lucky to be a part of this team of course the part of the excitement comes from knowing that all uh, this all builds towards public flighting later this year. And if people are excited, uh, I'm about the prospect that they should opt into the Halo Insider program, make sure their profiles and contacts are up to date, which I should probably do myself. Uh, I've been excited and incorporating many of the graphical features we developed over the last six months. At the same time, we're refining the lighting environment for the world that we've already built. In early iterations, we are getting the major components in the world to be fully featured playable state. But now we are reconsidering how they interact and improving what helps the world to be its most beautiful and intriguing. We are excited to share more soon. Sick. Uh, Josh Marvel. Great name. Here's something that excites me as an engineering architect for Infinite. We rebuilt the engine multi-threading solution to ensure high execution efficiency across all platforms and PCs. Instead of running optimally just on the Xbox One, we use this new system to transition the renderer to a massive parallel multi-threaded framework to support increased cost of all of our rendering features and achieve higher graphics efficiencies on PEC CPUs of various sizes as well as Series X and Xbox One X hardware. In practice, this me So, I'm sure you said that and you're like, I have no idea what the F that means. That, that was a lot of words that mean nothing. So, in practice, this means that we are doing our very best to make Infinite run optimally on any device you may choose to play on. Let's hope so. We can't, we don't want another cyberpunk. So now parting words from Infinite's head of creative, Joseph Staten. Come on down. Woo. Dance with hunters. We're going to read this whole thing because I, I read this a little bit and it sounds so good. Oh, more concept art. Or did they already post this? Is this new? Minecraft pillars and everything, and it, oh, I just, oh, it's so, oh, look at it. Oh my god, it's so good. All right, so, ah, yes, the combat dance, the beating heart of every Halo game. For grizzled Spartan veterans that seem to be a familiar scene, imagine a forerunner interior, a timeless metallic vault with soaring ceilings. It's quiet and empty, except for a pair of hunters. Shields up, shoulder spikes twitching, blocking your path forward. What do you do? That's easy, I said to myself. The first time I fought hunters in Halo Infinite, bait them, get them to charge, then step aside, pivot, and direct as much firepower into the explorer's wormy backsides as ever. 
I mean, I do it all the time in speedruns. You watch us, we just, like, run at the hunter, get him to attack us, and then we just walk around behind him and blast him with a shotgun or something. But when I tried this classic dance step, the hunter had something else in mind. As expected, one hunter's charge, exposing his weak spot. But by the time I'd pivoted to face it, however, it had already pivoted to face me. That's odd, I thought. Must be a bug. I tried the dance steps again, same result. Except this time, the second hunter had filled my face with fuel rod projectiles, sending me scrambling. That's interesting. So pretty much, like, he will attack you, but he's going to turn around immediately. So he's not going to hide very well. This sounds like killing hunters is going to be so annoying in Infinite. Um, and it also sounds like, so one of the, one of the benefits, uh, again, is a lot of times, uh, the hunters will attack, will melee if you're nearby both of them, but if you're next to a hunter, the other hunter will not shoot you, simply because it doesn't want to damage, it's the whole, like, they try not to damage teammates, a lot of enemies do that in Halo, so a lot of times the hunter won't do a charge shot if you're near another hunter, um, sometimes they do the, the little spike things that might be what he's talking about, so, um, yeah, sends him scrambling. Crouched behind a forerunner pillow, shields fired, uh, uh, fried, and held deep in the red. I quick think, what's different? Hunters turn faster. Wait, is there health? Health sis? Okay, anyways, we'll get back to that. Hunters turn faster. Okay, assume this isn't a bug. What's the game trying to tell me? What are the new dance moves I got? So basically, we are going to have to learn a new strat to kill hunters. Which I'm sure, once again, some people will be mad. They're like, why would you change hunters? They've been the same from every game. Bro. Chief is evolved. Why don't why don't the hunters? They learn. As another volley of enemy rattled my virtual head inside my virtual helmet, I remember I have equipment. Specifically in this case, in specifically in the case of more reactive hunters, I have a grapple shot, which means I'm faster and more mobile too. I don't want to spoil uh, your own fun experimentation with the detailed description of what happened next, but su suffice to, to say the grapple shot didn't cheese my encounter with the hunters it deepened it simultaneously made me feel more powerful and the hunters more intelligent we knew the rules had changed but the hunters weren't going to let me dance on their graves without a fight this is one of the example from a single encounter but for me it encapsulates what's so exciting about totally about the totality of the work that quinn tim david brian elon and kevin and the entire sandbox team have done to deepen and expand the halo combat toolkit it's great to feel their respect for Legacy. It's even better to experience how they've approved upon it. I'm a fan of that. I think games should. I think the AI should evolve and become more difficult over time. So that sounds sick. That's oh, You hear that from, you're like, ah, some random person. And then you're like, Joseph Staten said that? The man himself? Halo, Halo himself? I mean, it's not. I mean, jo you know, Joseph's been around for a long time. Don't get me, don't we? I mean, he's been around since ever but you know <laughs> you, you know what I mean. he's he's legendary in in halo it, anyone who knows halo knows joseph right so uh hear him talk about his campaign i hope they do this in like every i hope they do this in every update i want them to joseph to like leave a little statement of his experience in campaign and just even do this where he doesn't actually say what happened just be like give you a little taste and teasers of what could happen I am, this is very, it get, gets me giddy. I'm a big fan, so. Uh, those people would argue that Chief should never have evolved. You should have nothing but Mark V and the CE Magnum. Yeah, fair enough. But uh, stupid. That's all I'll say. Uh, anyways, that's kind of the update. Um, that's kind of my breakdown. There's not much to it. Uh, I saw that one health thing, which now means is like, wait, is there health packs in this game? I don't know what that means exactly. I don't know if they're going back to health pack system. I don't think they did. I didn't see something like that in campaign. So I assume it didn't. Um, I didn't. Yeah. I don't think I saw anything like that in the campaign trailer. So who knows? Nope. Uh, that was January 2021. We are now waiting a whole nother month till the next update. So luckily February is a shorter month. So maybe we'll get it quicker. I don't know. But that's the update halo infinite update again no not, very high level nothing super uh nothing super intense just very high level and and it was cool cool hearing about the sandbox team seeing the, these gorgeous weapons and just hearing about what they're working on and stuff it's cool to hear that they're like 90 percent of the work is kind of done 
the 10 percent is like let's make it good let's make it ready let's make it the best it can be which is what it should be at this point in development uh, again 90 percent is rough estimate like it could be like 80 percent but like yeah at this point with a year before a year leading up like i've i've always explained when it comes to game game uh development a lot of people don't understand that graphically and uh content wise all that shit gets added in in like the last year of the game the first like three years of development is just making the systems that the game will become the last year is actually okay let's actually put the game together um and so that involves even the graphics and and making it look good and actually getting your weapons in and stuff like that so hearing that all the content is in the game and now they're just tweaking it and tuning it and changing it up a little bit and that's really good that's this is it, it's the way that i see it is again I'm, I'm not some expert in the game industry but the way the what i know about it is like that sounds like the game is on track like this is the time that yeah most most content for most teams should be in the game sure there's going to be a lot i'm sure there's like armor customizations that aren't in the game yet or maybe there's a mission or something that bro is was more broken than they thought so they had to try and fix it or maybe they're tweaking a few parts of missions and they're testing it they find some bugs and so like 90 but like again like again open world maybe certain side missions aren't quite in the game yet but they're working on them and finished putting at they're mostly done with all of it at this point they're all laid out they know what they're doing they're making it and they're just finishing up and they'll probably all be they should all be in the game by summertime like the way is like i see it is like by summertime like june or july all of the content should be in the game for launch and then from there on it's just bug fixing and polishing for the next few months and uh so it's good hearing the sandbox team is basically all the content is mostly in or is all in and really is about tuning everything which is gonna take it takes a long time to do that stuff it takes months so it's, it's good to hear that so uh, that's kind of my, my takeaway that's kind of my breakdown of it uh hope you guys enjoyed so i don't think infinite will be another cyberpunk with what they're saying um i think there's a lot of hype for halo in in, in nominate i don't i don't know i don't know why you think there's no hype for halo i think people are insanely excited for infinite um i think it just died down a little bit because of the delay but people were people were ready so um but no i don't think even it would be another cyberpunk i think companies like and it's not just 343 we're talking about like literally every game company in the world i can guarantee you has looked at cyberpunk with like wide open eyes of being like let's not do that <laughs> so uh it would be obscene for them not to think like that uh and they mentioned it somewhere in here um what did they mention oh where was it it was near the bottom here uh I can't remember where they said it. They they uh they said it somewhere. I'm totally missing out where it is now. But um Oh, it's it's literally right here. So, right here she talks about how like a big thing is they rebuilt the engine is like as a game foundation uh foundation architect. Is here's something that excites is like bunch of bunch of nerd jargon, bunch of engineer jargon all the way here, but it it's Pretty much in practice, this means that we are doing our best to make sure Infinite runs optimally on any device you choose to play on. Now, that's also what Cyberpunk said, but I think they've looked at Cyberpunk and realized that's something that can happen. So, but basically, there'll be, it will be like, you're just going to have to accept that the Halo piece, the PC version and the Xbox Series X version will be better than the Xbox One version. It's just flat out, that is literally what this is saying. That is that it will run optimally on each device. But that doesn't mean the Xbox One version is bad. It's still going to run the best it can and very well. It will obviously just not look as good as maybe the PC version will, right? Like, 
PC will have ultra graphics, whereas maybe the Xbox One will only be able to run medium graphics. That kind of thing is that it will run very, is, is the hope, hope, again, they're saying it doesn't mean saying things and actually doing it is two different things. Means that they are doing their best to make sure it's not a cyberpunk, so. All right, though, that's kind of the, my whole spiel. So I uh, hope you guys enjoyed. As I said, I'm, I think I'm thinking about all of this YouTube. This is part of the whole, like, I'm just going to do a whole long, long-term video breakdowns and stuff. So anyways, though, that's it. Um, 